I'm Charles Lutenbrain, and um, the uh, process we're going to play with today is um, just a touch of fold forming. And fold forming is a system of metalworking, sheet metalworking, uh, which, which I developed. And it's quite quick, and it's very easy. And uh, so right now, we're going to make a leaf. And we're going to start just with a piece of uh, copper. And I have uh, softened this copper by heating it and quenching it in water. And we're going to start simply by folding it in half. And when you work metal, if you start your movement quickly, you will find that you get to move it much more effectively. I'm simply going to flatten the fold over. And this is called a basic line fold, and we can do all kinds of things with it, but for right now, we're just going to make a leaf. And I'm cutting it with a pair of aviation snips. Aviation snips are useful because they multiply the strength of your hand with all these sort of levery parts on it. There we go. And so I've just sort of cut a, a half round shape. And at this point, I'm going to walk over to the rolling mill, and we will use the wire part of the rolling mill. So first of all, I'm going to set the rolling mill to a pressure which will um, actually intrude on the, on the metal, really squishing it. Okay. And so I've adjusted the wire mill here. And um, I've left a little bit of a gap in between. And now I'm going to take our leaf form, and I'm going to place it at an angle onto the wire mill. And I've got a fair bit of pressure on here. Oh, a whole lot of pressure. There we go. And when you do this, might not need quite as much pressure, but still. Let's pull that out. And so we can see how the metal has literally squirted into the spaces available under the pressure of those rolls. And at this point, we'll go back and anneal it and open it. So at this point, we're going to anneal this. And I'm going to be watching the flame color. That's my indicator for when it's time. You can see the flame has just turned to an, a distinct orange color. That's my indicator. And now I'm just going to quench that in water. And now open it with my fingers. If I need to use a knife, I could. And um, just give it a little bit of a twist with the fingers like there, because Small curves like that always look more natural than uh, a straight line. And there we go. That's a leaf. And we can experiment with the angle that we put it in and so on to uh, produce different effects. Another uh, part of fold forming is um, making stars. And a star is a base form that is a very specific shape from which you can go in a number of different directions. So with this star that I'm going to make out of the square of metal, um, uh, it's, I, I, I can produce up to 35 different variations um, on this single object. So let's start by making a base form, a star. And I'm going to take the annealed copper, the softened copper, and I'm going to bend it over until the two ends meet. And uh, now I'm going to mallet it. And the um, fold edge, the folded part, is not too, too tight. And I'm now going to uh, heat this to anneal it. And what I'm watching for as an indicator for the annealing is I'm watching for the flame here as it leaves the object to turn a distinct orange color. 
And you can perhaps see that it's turning color here already. And I'm gonna, there, the whole flame is now orange. And I will quench it in water. And uh, now open it up. And with metal, each time that you harden it by working it, we can reset it to the soft state by annealing by doing that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find a, a, a sort of a 90 degree edge. Ideal would be a hard 90. And I'm going to take the heels of my hands and put them out as far as I can to increase my leverage. And I'm going to move very suddenly, a sudden push. Uh, metal, if you move it quickly, it'll move much further and faster than if you just push on it. And I'm going to take these two other wings and just mallet them, not too tightly. And now it's time to anneal it again. Again, we're looking for the orange flame. I'm seeing that occurring. I make sure I see it off all the surfaces. And again, we quench. Okay, I'm now gonna go over to um, my um, uh, sharpish edge. I'm going to place it with my fingers out as far as they can get in order to increase leverage. And I'm going to push down suddenly. And now on all four sides. An ideal will be a sharper edge, but this is gonna work just fine. And now a little bit of tightening. And we have a base form, a star. And again, this goes to dozens of places, many, many options. Um, so let's see, which options shall we choose? Uh, perhaps perhaps um, a similar option to one that we've done before. I'm going to work on um, what's called the, f the closed side of the fold. Now, in fold forming, uh, a, an area like this, which has been bent over, this is called a fold edge. And anything hanging down from a fold edge is called legs. And this side of the fold, this is the closed side of the fold, where the fold edges are. And this side of the fold, this is the open side of the fold. And in fold forming, it's actually quite simple. You have two choices. You can work the open side of the fold, or the closed side of the fold. And it's those combinations that make for opportunities. So I could work on all four sides on the open side, and I will have a flower-like thing. I can work on all four sides on the closed side, and then I will have something that's more like a pod or a shell. And I can work two on the open and two on the closed to produce another variation, or two opposites, two on the open, two on the closed, and so I can begin to generate variations. Okay, let's, um, let's work on the open side. Uh, one other comment is that the shape of this hammer is extremely important. Um, it cannot be straight across. So when you buy hammers, frequently they're straight across, and so you have to sand them and change them. And about one half of this surface is almost flat, and then there's a curve from here and here. And so we do not want a curve all the way across. We want a good part of the hammer flat, and that works out to about half the length is flat, and then a quarter is curved, and a quarter is curved, and this shape is what allows us to successfully fold form.
And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying as much as possible to stay just inside of the edge. I don't really want to make a razor blade, so I want my blows to be just inside the edge of this metal. Also, and this is important, uh, very often I keep my hammer and anvil in the same place and then we move the metal underneath it. So that the speed of moving it underneath is what makes the spacing even. I think we are th almost there. Just going to flatten things out. In fold forming, it's a very good idea to flatten things out before you open them. Right, so at this point, we've got our flower shape. And it's time to anneal it. And again, we're looking for the flame to change color. And I want that, I want to see that color change on all surfaces. So at this point, I'm now going to uh, open it up and uh, I'm going to insert a knife. You can use a screwdriver, you can use a butter knife, and uh, basically always keep metal between you and the knife. Open this and just manipulate a little bit with my fingers. If this was a harder material like sterling silver or 14 karat gold or steel, I would have to use tools to do that. And here we have the finished shape. Now I'm going to take one that I made earlier. I want to point out the importance of unit repetition, that by adding these to each other, we can make some very interesting objects. I have um, one at home that's about 12 feet long that goes from about this size down to about this size. It looks like a spine. This is uh, one of uh, many types of folds and uh, it does use the basics which is that we were dealing with fold edges, we were dealing with open sides in this case and closed sides.